Hello my scholars, you are welcome to my security channel and my name is Frank. In today's video, we shall be discussing about the deformation of solid. So do not go anywhere, relax and we'll be right back. You are welcome back to my school youtube channel in today's video like i said earlier on we are going to be learning about deformation of solid now take note that deformation of solid is still the same thing as the elastic properties of solid as you may see in some other textbook so before we begin with this lesson let's quickly run through the objective for today's lesson so objective number one explain the elastic properties of substances to state hook's law and show an understanding of the terms stress strain elastic limit young's modulus three solve simple problems on work done in stretching or compressing a spring and elastic strings so let's begin with the lesson so it is important to take note that in solid the molecules are very closely packed together and are held in relatively fixed position by strong intermolecular forces as a result of this, it is difficult for an external force applied on the solid to displace the molecules of the solid due to the resistance of the intermolecular forces between the molecules. So let's start with the definition of elasticity. So when we say elasticity, it simply means the ability of a substance to regain its original shape and size after being deformed by an external force or it is the ability of a substance to regain its original shape and size after the force that caused the deformation is removed so let's understand the meaning of deformation so deformation occurs when a substance okay so in this case a wire is stretched or compressed okay and deformation can be elastic or plastic so deformation is elastic if the wire returns to its original size and shape after the force that causes the deformation has been removed while it is plastic if it does not return to its original shape and size after the force that causes the deformation is removed so let's know the meaning of elastic material so what is an elastic material so an elastic materials are those materials that regain the original shape and size after the force that causes the deformation is removed so let's move to the next slide so on the next that we are going to be talking about the distortion of material and the word distortion is still the same thing as deformation okay so materials can be distorted by a force by stretching the material or compressing the material the amount by which a material is stretched or compressed depends on the amount of force that is applied on the material okay so if large force or more force is applied the material will stretch out or expand more or will compress or shorten more so if the force is small the material will expand little or compress slash shorten small or will not expand or compress at all okay robert hook is an english scientist who showed to us through experiment what happens when a force is applied on a solid so according to him he said that provided the elastic limit of an elastic material is not exceeded the extension e of a material is directly proportional to the load or applied force f so the extension or compression of a spring is directly proportional to the applied force according to hooke's law so according to hooke's so mathematically Hooke's law can be expressed as force is equals to k then change in length so the change in length here represents extension okay where f is the applied force k is the spring constant and the word spring constant we can as well call it force constant or we can call it the stiffness of the material okay k is spring constant or force constant or stiffness of the material okay and it is defined as a measure of stiffness or we can as well define it as the force required to give unit extension and the change in length here is the change in the length of the material and it's also known as extension let's move to the next slide so here is the graph of Hooke's law which is the graph of load against extension 
Okay, so uh, Wuxlaw showed us through experiment what happens to a solid when an external force is applied to it. So the first point on the curve is called the limit of proportionality. So each of these points and each of these things, we are going to be explaining them one after the other. So let's begin with the first one, which is the limit of proportionality. So the limit of proportionality is the point on the graph where the stress strain curve begins to deviate from a straight line. Okay, so take note of this word, stress strain curve. So according to Hooke's law, you also said, or Hooke's law can as well be stated in another way as the stress on a material is directly proportional to the strain on the material. Okay, so that's why we bring in this word, stress strain curve, which is still the same thing as load against extension. So let me go through the definition of limit of proportionality once more. Okay, so this is the point on the curve called the limit of proportionality. Okay, and it is the point on the graph where the stress strain curve begins to deviate from a straight line. Then we also have the elastic limit. So the elastic limit is the point up to which the material can be stretched elastically without causing permanent deformation. So let's move to the next slide so that we can see the definition of the remaining point. Then we also have a point on the curve called yield point. Okay, so this is the point beyond the elastic limit which the elastic material has yielded all its elasticity permanently and has become plastic. Then the last point is called the breaking point. So the breaking point is the point at which the material breaks after undergoing plastic deformation. It indicates the maximum stress that the material can withstand before breaking. So below are some examples for us to, to solve using the mathematical definition of Hooke's law. Okay, so a force of 0.8 Newton stretches an elastic spring by 2 cm. Find the elastic constant of the spring. Now remember that the elastic constant of the spring is the K. Okay, so if you look at the question very well, we are given the force and it's in Newton. And we are told that it is stretched, okay, stretches an elastic spring by 2 cm. So this 2 cm represents the change in length or the extension. But carefully looking at the extension, remember it is given to us in centimeters. So there's need for us to change the centimeter to meter, okay, so that all the units can go together. Okay, so force is equal to 0.8 Newton, extension is equal to 2 cm as given to us. In the question so that means we have force we know the extension but we don't know k which is the elastic constant of the spring okay so first of all we have to convert the two centimeter to meter right but remember that one meter is equal to 100 centimeters so if i'm changing two centimeters to meter i have to divide the two meter by 100 Okay, so 2 divided by 100, that will be equal to 0.02 meter. Now, since we are looking for K, and we know that F is equal to KE, so we can simply make K the subject of formula by dividing both sides by E, so that K is equal to F over E, which is exactly what we have here. So since K is equal to F over E, we just impute the, uh, the, the values of F and extension that is given to us in the question. So that would be 0.8 all over 0.02, right? So 0.02 is still the same thing as say 2 over 100, right? And 0.8 is still the same as 8 over, uh, 8 over 10. Okay, so let me do that. So if we're having 8 over 10, then divided by 2 over 100. Now remember, when you are solving fraction of this, uh, of this form, what you simply do is that you keep the first fraction, okay, which is 8 over 10, then you change the sign, this is division sign, so we change it to times, then we flip the second fraction. So the 100 comes up and 2 goes down, right? So two year, uh, so 100 year, uh, 10 year, sorry, is 1, and 10 year is, uh, is 10, right? 2 year is 1, and 2 year is 4. So that at the end of the day, we'll be having 4 times 10, which is close to 40 Newton per meter. Okay, 40 Newton per meter, which is the unit of the stiffness of an elastic material or force constant. Okay, so the value of the elastic constant of the spring is equal to 40 Newton per meter. So let's solve example 2. A force of 2 Newton stretches an elastic material by 30 millimeter. What additional force will stretch the material 35 millimeter 
assume the elastic limit is not exceeded. Okay, so let's move to the next slide. So the reason why I'm solving this on the, I'm just showing it on the screen is because they are quite easy to solve. Okay, so from the question, these are the data that are given to us. Force is equal to Trinity. The first extension is equal to 30 millimeter. Of course, we have to convert it to meter. Okay, and remember that one meter equals to 1,000 millimeter. So if we are converting from millimeter to meter, we have to divide by 1,000. So we divide 30 by 1,000. That will be equal to 0.03 meter, right? But remember that F is equal to Ke. Okay, F equals to Ke according to Hooke's law. So that since we are looking for K, we make K the subject of formula, just like we did in the previous example. So we divide both sides by E, so that K becomes F over E, right? So the next is just for us to impute the values for a force and extension that is given to us in the question. So that K is equals to 2 for our force, which is the value of the force that is given to us, divided by the extension, which we have converted to meter. So that would be 2 divided by 0 0.03. Okay, so if we manipulate this, our answer will be equals to 66.67 Newton per meter. Right? Now we are solving for the additional force. So now we already know our K, which is our force constant, and we have a new extension. So we need to get the new force. Okay, so let the force, which is the new force now that we are looking for, let it, uh, let the force stretching the material 35 millimeter be F. So as usual, this 35 millimeter, which is the second extension that is given to us in the question, we have to convert it to meter by dividing by 1000. So if we do that, we'll be having 0 0.035 meters, right? Re remember that force is equal to Ke. So now that we know our force constant and we know the new extension, so we just multiply to get the value of the new force, okay, or the force stretching the material at 35 millimeter. So that will be equal to 66.67 times 0 0.035, and that will be equal to 2.33 Newton. Okay, so the new force is equal to 2.33 Newton. But the question requires us to find the additional force. Okay, so how do we get the additional force? So to get the additional force, what we simply do is that we subtract the initial force, okay, from the new force. And remember, the new force is 2.33 Newton. So we subtract the initial force that is given to us, which is 2 Newton from the new force. And if we do the subtraction, that will be equal to 0 0.33 Newton. Okay, so the additional force, okay, that is needed to stretch the material 35 mm is equal to 0 0.33 Newton. So this is where we end the preview for today's video. But you can enjoy the complete video by clicking on the link in the description below and that will take you to my school website. There you have to subscribe to enjoy the complete video. So in the complete video, we define stress, we define strain, and we also define your modulus and show the relationship between them. We also discuss about the work done on an elastic material and many more. I believe you enjoyed this video. If yes, please hit the like button, click on the subscribe button, and lastly, tap on the notification bell to get informed as soon as we release the next video.